Hello, my name is Teacher Bell and welcome to another tips, review, and tutorial. So after two long weeks of virtual teaching, this is how my brain looks like. This is literally how my brain looks like as of this moment because every time I see something new on the web, I feel the need for me to try this with my students but they say as long as you are doing the best you can then that is more than enough and technology should not be a measure on how good we are as teachers it will always depend on our instruction and how we build our relationship with our students so, a day in my virtual teaching this is with small groups and I'm gonna share some six tips for a smooth remote learning and these are some of the apps that I have been using for the past two weeks Google Slide, Jamboard, of course Google Meet the Breakout Room, Classroom Screen and the Padlet Board. There, these are just some of the few and I would really appreciate it if you have additional information, comments or questions please put them in the comment section below because some of the teachers around the world are also seeing those questions and I personally learn from those additional information as well. So, let's get started! Okay, so these are just some tips before you start your virtual class and we're gonna discuss this one by one as we go along the video. So, one is prepare two devices one for students view and another for your presentation and your virtual class second is make a go to google slide deck for generic use and i'm gonna share this one by one create a three page google slide for each subject okay during virtual class i would suggest for you to open only three tabs or windows whichever you pre prefer so one tab is for lesson plan, another is your go-to slide, and of course your breakout rooms. Fifth tip is to open the breakout rooms and slide presentation for each group before the students can even log in. And finally, after your virtual class, you recreate your Google Slides per subject for the following day based on today's learning flow. So gonna discuss this one by one let's go back to our first tip prepare two devices one for students view I usually feel confident when I see my presentation and when I see my students but instead of using dual less extension and which splits your screen I prefer to have two devices for my presentation and this is how it looks like on the students view so this other device is all turned off the microphone the video and the speaker so there would be no feedback i just want to see all of them yes let's go to number two make a go to google slide deck for generic use so this is how my go to slide deck look like just a video tutorial i made on how to log into google meet and i also included a sign in for them so it's also linked so this is just an interactive activity in the morning so everything here is linked thank you by the way to whoever posted this in um, one of the groups so let me just show you my attendance and class jobs okay so these are the class jobs that I assigned one for calendar updater chat box monitor you can also copy this timekeeper and attendance checker and class dojo recorder I included here a math link for my math presentation so here you go slide link to the slide deck so you know sometimes when we accidentally close our presentation for the subject I just go to my go to slide and then pull out the link 
Now at the very end of my go to slide, my go to slide for my quick online tools for impromptu activities. So sometimes our lesson plan is flexible and something just comes up so you can have a go to just in case you need some just in case you need a tool for your quick write individual whiteboard for your timer for your voluntold if no one wants to volunteer you can always voluntold using the wheel of names this is the first copy i'm gonna show this later so let's um, check this out one by one so this is my padlet board Padlet board is just like a quick write tool where the students can collaboratively add their post or ideas. Once the student click on the plus sign, okay, they can always add something to it. And then you can see their answers real time. So once you share this document to your students, everybody can add their post to it. Now, I consider this as a quick tool because you can always remove let's say you are working on another lesson and you need a quick write tool you can always delete and then it's going to be a brand new board and the jam board is like an individual whiteboard i love this because of the pages so i'm just going to show you one example so this was one of our lesson in social studies, absolute and relative location. So what I did was I shared this document to them and I just put their name so that they will know which page should they be working on. Okay, that's the job. And if you need a timer, let's say for your activities or for your breaks, I would suggest you use the classroomscreen.com. Because it gives you the option to add a timer, a note, and change the background as well. And if you need a reminder, you can also put some text so you're done. Okay. So while they work on something else, you can share this screen. Okay, let's go to the next one. So I use the wheel of names if, uh, let's say, I want to put a twist on calling people to volunteer. And then you just add the names here and then it will automatically generate the wheel for you so just close the add and then once you click on it it will just choose the name another one is the Google slides of course I use this one if I want them to submit a more formal formative assessment so so what I do is Click the share button and then change the restriction to anyone can edit and then copy the link done and when you share it let's say when you are in your main room when you share it okay you just take out all the words after the slash and replace it with copy so that once you share it and they open it, it will force them to make a copy and then they just share it to me so I can see what they're working on. Go Noodle. I know most of you use Go Noodle for Brain Break, Class Dojo for Communication, and the Safe YouTube for ad free videos. So if you have YouTube videos that have ads, you can always go to save, safeyoutube.net just paste the link here and it will give you a video link with no ads so that's the purpose of safe youtube so these are the go to tools that i use so let's go to the next step that's just the second step okay but if you have this you are good to go so the third one is create a three page google slide for each subject so these are my three slides day five for synchronous activity day five for my asynchronous activity and this is how i group them and 
day six, I mean day five for my small groups. So those are just the three slides that I prepare each day. And then I just put all the links that we need to discuss and then just click on it every time you use them. Um, I always put some early finisher activities just in case some students finish early. Okay, so that's uh, step three. Now let's proceed with during virtual class. I only open three tabs and that's the lesson plan, my go-to slide, this one, and my breakout rooms which I'm gonna show it to you now. So when I start my, my breakout rooms, I use the breakout room extension and I have a tutorial of this one if you wanna check it out. So once I go to my Meet, okay, I choose Start Class with Google Meet. Now, um, in my last tutorial about these breakout rooms, some of you have been asking why once you click on Open Both, you only see one or two slides. So this is what I found out when you choose this one, choose course, okay, make sure to choose how many breakout rooms you want to present and then be ready to join into this room if even before the students come in so, so i go to room one and present the tab that they will be working on so that as soon as they enter room one the presentation is already in there okay so the same with the main room so since I have a few students, I just uh, open out one breakout room so that group 2 will go to room 1 and the group 1 will just stay with me in the main room. But if you have more students, then you can do the same but this time using 3 or 4 breakout rooms. Now, a lot of you also have been asking how to prevent feedbacks make sure that the speaker is also turned off let's say you are talking to your main room then you turn on the speaker the audio and the video on this one and make sure the other room is all turned off and the same way if you want to go to room one then turn on the speaker the mic and the video but make all this turned off okay so it's vice versa after virtual class i don't usually do all my slides presentation for the whole week of the lesson plan what i do is i only recreate the google slides per subject for the following day based on today's learning flow okay this is my slide for today i just select all this so shift until the third slide copy it and then I just paste it and and change the day so day 10 day 10 and day 10 so since I'm switching the activities for the group today I just change this and make it okay so since this one came to my main room yesterday, I mean today, so tomorrow they will go to room 2 and my group 1 comes in main room. So I just switch it and then if you have any additional information or lesson to put here, then you can put it here. And the same with my math small groups. So I just recreate it so it's easier for me to track the flow of my day-to-day -day slides there you go those are just my six tips on how you can conduct a smooth remote learning but I'm sure you also have your ways and if you don't mind sharing those ways also on the comment section below so we can also learn from each other so thank you very much and have a great day bye bye